All right, take a look at your uh, screens right now. Uh, Trump's media stock is down 18 percent uh, right there. You can see it. Uh, it has been dropping throughout the morning. This comes after the company that owns Truth Social posted financial numbers this morning. CNN's Matt Egan joins me now. Uh, Matt, this is no April Fool's joke, uh, but it might be making some fools out of investors out there. Yeah, Jimmy, it might be. Uh, we should note, though, that this stock really had been going up like a rocket ship until now. These new numbers are forcing a mini reality check. I say mini because despite the loss of 18% as we speak, we're still talking about a stock that has skyrocketed about 200% so far this year. It spiked in January when Donald Trump ran away with the Iowa caucuses and up again as the company went public. So here's the latest numbers that are concerning investors. Uh, True social owner Trump Media lost $58 million last year, and it generated very, very little revenue, just four. Point one million dollars in revenue. Uh, put some context around that figure of revenue. If you look back at what Twitter generated when it went public about a decade ago, in that final year when it went public, six hundred and sixty-five million dollars, more than a hundred times what Trump Media has been able to rake in. And, and, and some of this is not shocking because we know that Truth Social is struggling. I mean, it is shrinking. Monthly active U.S. users on iOS and Android down 51 percent year over year. It's not just much smaller than Twitter. It's even smaller than threats. And I think all of this just underscores why uh, there's a lot of warnings out there about this stock, right? One professor told me it's a bubble. Another basically called it a meme stock. So, Jim, listen, we're going to see this stock go up and down uh, because its valuation right now is very, very high. Yeah, what a shocker that this is a meme stock. Uh, all right, Matt Egan, uh, you know, caveat emptor, uh, uh, buyer beware. Uh, Matt, thanks so much. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Jim. Will Trump face any accountability? And will Republican leaders call him out after the former president shared a video on social media that could pose a security risk for President Biden? Here's that horrific video posted by Trump showing the president hogtied in the back of a pickup truck. Over the weekend, Biden and Trump offered distinctly different Easter messages. The president calling for peace, security, and dignity for people around the world. As for Trump, he wished a happy Easter to those he, quote, totally despises in the, quote, failing nation, end quote, that he hopes to lead. He reshared articles suggesting he's a modern-day Jesus who is being crucified, and he accused the president of a, quote, years-long assault on the Christian faith. Uh, the president, of course, is a devout Catholic. This week, he's pledging to address, uh, quote, Biden's border bloodbath, uh, putting a lot of these in quotes just to make sure you understand this is Trump's rhetoric. Uh, this is just 11 days after insisting that uh, that uh, rhetoric was exclusively about the economic consequences of a Biden victory. Here with me to discuss Trump's increasingly inflammatory and violent rhetoric is Ruth ben -Giot. She's a professor of history at NYU. She's also the author of multiple books, including Strongman Mussolini to the President. Uh, and uh, Ruth, uh, great to have you on as always. Um, you know, when we talk about Trump sharing this violent uh, video of the President, uh, President Biden, hogtied in the bed of a pickup truck, you know, we saw the consequences of his words on January 6th. How concerned are you about this kind of stuff uh, sparking some kind of violence? What do you think? I'm very concerned. And uh, it's, you know, when you work on coups and authoritarian takeovers, you look at this a bit differently. Uh, it's not just a joke. Um, the fact it's a life-size image it's really performing, you know, a work of imagination for Americans because a sitting president of the United States who's hogtied as though he's some kind of hostage, uh, this implies, shall we say, not a democratic transition of power, <laughs> but something, uh, a bad end that is happening to the sitting president of the United States. And when it's shared on social media by somebody who already tried to overthrow the government, then of course that is that is extremely serious and uh, and and bespeaks a, a very you know an intent to continue to incite violence against uh, anyone who's trying to hold him accountable. But now also uh, the president of the United States. Right, and typically, I mean, when if somebody out there just in the general public were to share an image like this, that they might expect a visit from the United States Secret Service. Uh, but now it, it just seems that th this kind of violent imagery, this kind of dangerous political rhetoric has become so commonplace 
it makes you wonder what the authorities do with this kind of stuff. I, I, sh I share those concerns. And, yeah. you know, it's very important to strike back at and hold people accountable. Um, and especially someone like Trump, who has a history of this. In 2023, um, he posted an image of himself, a baseball bat, and the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, who was trying to hold him accountable. And, you know, he, he doesn't have to explicitly say, please go bash the head of this, this you know, prosecutor, this member of the judiciary trying to uphold the rule of law. He just posts the images together. And so he's a very skilled propagandist, and he knows what his followers will, will do with this. But this is not isolated. It's not just him. The Kansas GOP recently held a fundraiser and invited donors as a reward for giving money to uh, be able to bash uh, and assault an effigy of Biden with sticks. And, you know, the official party distanced itself, but it still happened, and it had lots of takers. So there's been this attempt to delegitimize and discredit and incite violence against judges, their families, but now we're seeing uh, it arrive up to the sitting president of the United States. And Ruth, uh, you know, Trump's campaign claimed that those bloodbath comments that we were discussing a couple of weeks ago were exclusive to the economy. Uh, now he's using the term to talk about the southern border. Uh, I, what was your reaction to that when he brought up this quote-unquote border bloodbath. There's that term again, bloodbath. Because with, with propaganda, it's not just uh, about getting somebody to believe a lie, a specific lie, like who won the 2020 election. It's really about uh, creating associations and inciting emotions in people. So Trump knows very well, he's very skilled at this, that when he talks about the bloodbath that will uh, overcome the whole country, he wasn't only talking about the auto industry, it's not only about the border. It's about uh, instilling a kind of existential fear in people. And that's how you, have, you get them to either commit violence on your behalf, which happened on January 6th, when he said, if you don't fight like hell, you won't have a country anymore. So, or they'll look away when violence is committed by others. And so Trump is slowly and relentlessly kind of shaping an emotional climate, a psychological climate that is needed for autocracy. And Ruth, uh, you know, the other uh, thing that's popped up in the last couple of days, you know, Trump going after Judge Mershon's daughter uh, by name yeah. on Truth Social. Of course, he's the judge overseeing the, the Alvin Bragg case that you just mentioned a few moments ago. What does this mean for the judicial system uh, when this repeatedly happens and there aren't any consequences for Trump? Uh, he's been admonished, you know, by judges not to cross the line rhetorically in certain ways. There have been limited gag orders put in place here and there. Nothing really does the trick. Yeah, and this is a huge mistake uh, because uh, this is exactly what authoritarians do. They go after prosecutors, lawyers, judges, anybody who can try and hold them accountable, and they go after their families. This is one of the, the regular things been happening since Mussolini. Even if people go into exile, if a regime takes hold, you, they go after your family who might be left in the country. So uh, what Trump did here was call the, the judge's daughter a rabid Trump hater. The, that's a phrase which he knows is going to anger his opponents who are very loyal to mm -hmm. him. And thus, he's doing things deliberately to uh, create a climate of hostility that could result in physical violence. He knows exactly what he's doing. All right, Ruth Van Giat, thanks as always for coming on. We'll, I'm sure we'll be having this conversation again and again. But uh, as always, we appreciate the insights.